Hello, friends. I'm Dr. J. It's a pleasure to share space with you. I am being told that there are many members of my soul family who are here during this moment in time to raise the vibration of the earth. And what that means is that you might have this calling inside of you that you were made for more. There's like a business idea brewing or a book waiting to be written and conversations that you have that lift others up, that you recognize you are a light worker in many ways. You're wandering the world, raising the vibration, and you likely didn't even know it, right? It turns out Marky Mark and the Beach Boys were onto something with this whole good vibration thing. And so I wanna talk about your vision and how it raises your vibration, because a lot of us are stuck on the struggle bus. And that bus stops at the places of worry, self-doubt, believing we're not enough, fear, analysis paralysis, fear of missed opportunity, comparisonitis, overthinking. Anybody on that route? I used to live on that bus. <laughs> I took that bus all around town. And I finally decided, you know what? I was meant to ride in a Porsche. And I was meant to be on the highway, cruising, just with ease, with the windows down, beautiful 72 degrees, sunny day, my hair blowing a little bit, not caring if it gets just a little messy. I used to have this hairstyle before COVID that was like picture perfect, everything kind of, every hair in its place. <coughs> and then COVID happened and guess what? Woo-wee, the grand disaster. I let it just get long and shaggy and I kind of love it because now, my hair can be out of place and get a little rustled and tussled and it's like, okay, that's called beach curls. I like it. Turns out I was busy scaling mountaintops, plummeting to the valley below to recover, scaling the next one, plummeting to recover. And then I learned about high performance and I learned the six pillars of high performance and they made a lot of sense to me. They matched a lot of what I'd learned in my doctorate program about leadership in a culture of innovation and change. And I learned that the world's highest performers, the largest body of research indicates that they perform consistently. Then the best part, so not only are they not peaks and plummets, they're consistent performing. However, the best part is they do it while maintaining their health and well-being and quality relationships. Say what? I don't know about you, but every time I took a courageous move and changed the direction of my career, every time I did that, I gained 10 to 15 pounds. I lost quality time with my friends and self-care was the first thing cut off the calendar. So I had to, I went on a mission to learn how they did those things. And what I've done is created a program that because God has told me that my soul family is here, they're sick of living in the third dimension. They're sick of defining their worth by their paycheck, by their home, by the car they drive, by the people they know and the titles on their resume. And they may be experiencing an agitation that could come in the form of a health condition. It could come in the form of a change in relationship status with a loved one or a romantic partner or a child who's inviting you to think differently, dramatically differently perhaps. I've also been told it can come in the form of a health condition. And what was interesting about receiving that during my prayer time was that those were all the agitations that I had also faced. And when I asked God, I said, wow, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Like I'm selfishly teaching myself. And I learned that I'm the, I'm best positioned to serve the person I once was. That means the person who is dealing with a difficult divorce and redefining their identity. It means the person who may be struggling to provide financially. When I was abandoned and pregnant, I had to figure out how am I going to afford to provide for this child on a solo income and do this all by myself. That was really challenging. So it might be a parent who's facing that solo experience or who feels like they're solo because their partner is as good as nothing, right? It might be that. I meet a lot of people who they have a partner, but it's almost like having a partner is actually worse than not having a partner. That, that blows my mind and actually makes me grateful that even though being solo was a struggle, there were a lot of times that I had, I didn't have a, a man 
who was also acting as a child to take care of. And that was, that, I was grateful for that as I saw that around me. Um, it could also be navigating difficult legal circumstances. I had the most mind blowing thing happen to me. When um, my daughter was born, I rekindled with my ex-husband who the reason we split was because he was asking our neighbor about where to meet nice men. So being incredibly Catholic, he didn't want to be gay. However, in his own identity crisis, um, we had a lot of that, that had a very negative effect on our marriage. And I'm sure that I had a role to play. He had a role to play in all honesty. It was so long ago. It's not really worth unpacking. However, what is worth unpacking is that moment when we rekindled, everything was romantic. He would show up with cologne. It was cute. Like it was when we met in, when we were in our twenties, early twenties. And so we tried to make it work. Well, the drinking started again and I told him, if you come home and wake up that baby, I'm out of here. He came home drunk, woke up the baby, and I left. I left because my mom was courageous enough to leave. By the way, I stand on the shoulders of amazing women, and you do too. I know that our parents aren't perfect, but I want you to challenge yourself to see the absolute best in them because they were strong. They were strong in the circumstances they were navigating just like you are. So I left, and then guess what happened? He charged me with kidnapping, a child that's not his. And it was, what was even more ironic is he's a white man and her father was a black man. So it was like, he's from Africa. She clearly is African American and not his kid. So it wasn't even like you could confuse, you could have blamed confusion or infidelity or anything like that. It was a really um, awkward, awful and shockingly difficult time. And it might be that that's what you're going through. I'm going through my own uniqueness so that maybe one of these things relates to you because God has told me, you're gonna have to be vulnerable. You're gonna have to share your stories. I need the best and highest version of yourself right now. And I'm like, uh, I put on the mask of masculinity every day and I pretend everything's fine, even when it's not. I stuff myself in a box, put it on a shelf, neat, tidy and organized, and I go and present a polished version of myself to the world. I've learned to use my masculine energies of being disciplined, determined, decisive, and aggressive in pursuit of my career goals as my operating system. And now here God's telling me, be authentic. I'm like, like all, all, all. So all, all, here we are. And I'm, I'm also being told that that's because that's what you need is a safe place to have all of you show up. And that safe place is the awakening community. If you go to drj.com forward slash divine, you will be able to sign up. We are launching on the 11th, which is the final countdown, two days. And that day is just a special day to honor the angels in our lives because the number 11 continues to surface. I actually have to look up the meaning here because I wasn't planning on talking about this, but I do think it's really important right now. I can feel that it's important for you to know why the 11th. And um, it feels so weird to even say this because I used to put all of my intuition externally outside of me. And I would look to books for solutions. And I'm realizing in this awakening journey that the answers are in me. And I'm also being told and guided that I have psychic abilities. I didn't even used to believe that was a thing and and deep deep intuition and i thought to myself i don't even really know what my intuition is because i've looked externally at the world studied the best in the world who are the best leaders the best high perf highest performers and i've reverse engineered their behaviors to become my life and it it brought me a lot of success i was able to as a single mom on a solo income without a dime of child support or maintenance be able to buy the one and a half million dollar home overlooking the Rocky Mountains on five acres with a barn, put a horse in the yard for my daughter and a Porsche in the garage for myself because that's the kind of horse I like to ride. And I thought, you want me to change my operating system, God? I probably wouldn't have listened, but what happened was five months after making that dream come true, I was laid off. Two days after layoff was diagnosed with the most aggressive cancer you can have most aggressive cancer type and on a scale of zero to 20 plus, my KI 67, which describes growth, was a 51. My coach said, even your cancer is high performing. And I went, 
I think I might need a new playbook. <laughs> In that moment, I realized I need a new playbook and you might too. And so that was my agitation that created an invitation to do something differently. Your agitation might be health related also. It might be relationship related, a change in relationship status. I know a lot of people going through that right now. A lot of heartbreak. I just went through that in January. The person I thought I was gonna marry, I haven't thought about marrying someone again since divorce in 2009. I just, that man came in to my life and I just, I felt it right away. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'd been praying once I saw God working in me taking me away from the $1.7 million house in the country club. Literally, the foundation was poured on a seven degree day without a concrete mix. The backfill was done too soon and the walls were displaced over an inch and a half. God literally brought me, and this was at a time when I didn't even wanna to go to church. I was like, oh God, you can take your God stuff somewhere else. I'm, I'm busy, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I don't have time to even be feeling about that in this moment. And luckily through my daughter requesting to go to church, I ended up in a very divine relationship with God. God brought me a construction manager and a professional engineer literally within two weeks to walk alongside me and get out of that difficult contract, get my 50,000 in earnest money back. One of them, I literally, when I saw that he was a PE, I was introducing him to my accountant. He needed a, a good CPA. And one of the members of the church said, hey, Dr. Jay's probably got one. She's working on this large home loan and probably has a really good accountant. So I said, yes, I do. We exchanged emails. I said, I'll facilitate an introduction tonight. I saw literally in his email signature, PE. And I thought, I wonder what that is. Because in my background in education, I thought of physical education. And I knew it probably wasn't that. So, because PE is followed by teacher in education. So I Google, what is a PE? Now my realtor had told me that I had no rights and I did not, I did not have the ability to fight the builder in this moment, in this circumstance. And I was so damn scared because here I had 50,000 in earnest money on the line. It was the biggest investment I'd ever made in my entire life. And I was doing it by myself. Interest rates were on the rise. I was going to bat with my boss for a promotion. I was super nervous about that. I was having conversations with Google, considering making a leap, leaving the company that I loved to go elsewhere for a raise. And I was just in a lot of stress. I couldn't sleep at night because my mind was spinning, was playing out various scenarios and solutions. And a lot of that was because my daughter tells me I have CFD, control freak disorder. <laughs> It made me laugh and I was like, you're absolutely right. I'm the girl who after divorce decided, wait a minute, relationships and career, there's got to be more to life than this. I created a great eight dimensions of life map for myself, a 12 page strategic plan aligned with every dimension, compelling vision for each dimension, aligned commitment statements for each dimension. And off I went to rebuild my life. That's what you call reinvention, my friends. It's a lot of work. Well, what I'm realizing now and what I feel really called to do is to help those who don't have the energy for reinvention, who need just micro edits. All you need are small, simple things. And one of the simplest of those is to be in a community of love and support. And that's what awakening is. It's an experience. Yes, you'll have a course to participate in. Yes, you'll have coaching because those things are important. When you know better, you do better. And when you have a coach alongside you, the best in the world all have coaches. That's the, one of the main differences between them and you is you haven't invested in yourself. I know I was in that boat. I was like, I don't have the extra money to do that. Well, guess what? When I invested in myself, I started showing up differently. When I started showing up differently, my vibration was a lot higher. When my vibration raised, everything started happening for me and because of me. And I went, oh, why didn't anyone tell me it could be this easy? No one said that it could be this easy. That things could be in this state of flow and peace and love and caring all the good things that I love, that's the juicy part, right? So let's get back to storytelling. The reason that we're kicking off on May 11th at 1111 Mountain, 1011 East or Pacific and 111 Eastern, I should have went in order. 1011 Pacific, 1111 Mountain and 111 Eastern is because 1011 is a sign to continue your spiritual journey with more faith. 
and to start fresh to tap into, get this, new psychic abilities. The answer might be in you, my friend, and you might be like I was, looking externally. So we're going to manifest an inward look to believe in yourself and your talents. And 1011 also encourages you to be yourself as the universe guides you. Now let's talk 1111. Angel number 1111 is a reminder, get this, to trust divine timing and stay on the right path. It signals that you have a soul plan or destiny and encourages questioning things not aligned with your well-being. I was like, you can't even make this up. I've been divinely guided. I sold the dream house to, to finish that story, right? So God brought me the individuals, the professional engineer, highest certification you can have, and get this. When I asked him if he would come out to the property, he said, yeah, I'll see you there in 10 minutes. I said to him, oh my gosh, I actually, um, I have about a 50 minute commute there because I live downtown in Denver. Would it be possible to meet at the top of the hour? So we agree. And I asked him, I said, why did you drop everything to be able to do that? And he said, because the Holy Spirit washed over me the minute you walked up and said, help this woman. And I didn't know how on earth I was going to help you because you seemed so confident. So the minute you asked, I knew that was God. And in that moment, I thought, I don't know God like that. I don't hear God like that. I'm observant. I observe and I identify when to help people. And if they ask, I also obviously always help. But most of the time when I'm helping others is because I observe their need and it matches a skill that I have. And I thought to myself, I wonder how does he hear God? And he had told me he speaks in tongues sometimes. I was like, I don't even know what that means. I know it sounds funny, but I don't know what that means. Now I know that there's light language, there's other forms of communication that are aligned with the divine. And so you might be being called to awaken that side of yourself as well. And so awakening, that may be an outcome for you that happens as a part of that program. 1111, we just talked about. Uh, so 111, get this, 111 is a sign that we are on the right path. It encourages us to take chances and try out new things, to be a yes person. It's a powerful reminder that our thoughts have the power to manifest our desires into reality. It serves as a wake up call, urging us to align our thoughts with the divine and focus on positive empowering beliefs. Angel number 111 carries a high vibrational frequency that resonates with the magic of manifestation. It is an invitation from the universe to align your thoughts, beliefs, and intentions with your highest aspirations. Seeing this number repeatedly is a gentle nudge from the celestial realm, urging you to embrace your inner power and trust in the divine timing of your dreams. Do you see the theme that emerges? What's beautiful is for those of you who are watching this on video, I've been working on um, High Performance Leadership Academy for seven years, and then in three hours, this came to me, sitting by these grand oak trees, and this was all from God. Some of it are things that I knew before, but the way that they all flew out was in a different order, a different sequence, a different package. And when I finished writing and I looked at the clock, it was 111, and I went, oh my gosh, a sign that you're on the right path sign that the timing of this is divine and then I went down that rabbit hole and I learned that Jupiter and Uranus are in conjunction right now Ugh, I wasn't really planning on talking about this so I don't have that note in front of me it's kind of interesting I'm a little off what I thought was the track but I feel really called to continue on this path so listen to this Jupiter is the planet of here it is get this four things that are characteristic when Jupiter is in our orbit. Jupiter is the planet of expansion, abundance, success, and fortune. Uranus is the planet of innovation, change, and awakening. And you want to know something so crazy is that awakening was literally, when I went back to a note from my coach two years ago, she said I was awakening into God's master plan for my life. What? I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Awakening? That was the word that God told me was to be the title of this program. 
And the first thing we're going to talk about is being anxious and awakened and those characteristics. And I was like, okay, talk about anxiety. A lot of our, we become so anxious, right? In that moment when I didn't know what to do, I had $50,000 of earnest money on the line. I was anxious, right? And then I saw God deliver. Literally, my realtor said, the only way you're getting out of this one's with a professional engineer. And I thought, I can't afford that. The next week at church, I meet a gentleman who needs a CPA. I introduce him to my CPA. I see he's a professional engineer. I ask him to meet me at the site. He meets me there immediately. I ask why he moved so fast. He said, because the Holy Spirit told me to help you. What? You can't make this up, right? It's like God is so amazing, yet God is also a three mile per hour God. When we're in the hurry and hustle, stuck in that traffic jam on the struggle bus, pushing through the day, pushing to dot every I, cross every T, make sure we don't drop the ball, we miss God. It's when we're in a state of flow. What Mikhail Chick set me high introduced in the 90s was characteristics of flow. I trained on those a couple weeks ago. You can look it up if you want to go down, down that journey and see what does flow really mean. I had a client ask me that, and so I dedicated that training to her. So what's really special right now is that we have Jupiter and Uranus in conjunction, which only happens every 14 years. So if you go back to 2010, what was happening in your life at that time? That's the energy we're entering. To me, I was bringing my daughter into the world, becoming a mom for the first time, experiencing the deepest, widest love for the first time, and the biggest challenges and insecurities of, am I good enough as a mom? I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know if I can afford this child. There was a lot of anxiety around that as well. So we're entering into the kind of energy that you experienced in 2010. And what I would love to offer you is the invitation to do that, knowing better, having a coach alongside you, guiding you, and in the most loving, high vibrational community of support that you can ever imagine. People who know they've got a big vision for their life. And that vision, what I'm being told is that those of us who are going to be uniting together have a vision to make a difference in a world that's dark, to raise the consciousness of the global collective, to be Romans 12 too. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Easy choices, hard life. That's the patterns of this world. It's going to lead you to a hard life. I love to think in the normal distribution curve. The norm in America is anxious. They're experiencing high degrees of anxiety, high degrees of depression, high incidences of obesity, and poor financial management. I don't know about you, but that, none of that sounds good to me. So I thought, okay, do not conform to the patterns of this world. Sold. I don't want to do those things. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And I want you to awaken your mind to know God the way I now know God. To know God as a galactic God who is orchestrating things happening for you and because of you. Because you choose to release patterns of past behavior. Release toxic ways of thinking. And trust that you are being divinely guided to see those God glimmers everywhere and to surrender to the journey. That's what I had to do last December. I, was, I had decided to sell my home, I had the most loving individual say, you seem really stressed. Do you think this is worth it? As we're sitting out on the back deck of my home, the sunset's gorgeous. Gigi had just finished riding her horse. And I looked at that individual and said, of course it's worth it. And they said, are you sure? I said, yeah. And that individual told me that stress was the leading cause of cancer, which I knew. I had just gotten my cortisol results back from my functional medical team. And those results said that I was eight times the normal level. My doctor literally asked me if I had a life-threatening job. And I laughed and said, no, I was actually just laid off. I have no real job. But I do see this as the divine invitation to launch the business of my dreams. And I've been wanting to do that for a long time. And so now I'm going to pursue that wholeheartedly. But I was also very stressed. I mean, the cost of running that property was ten to 13000 a month. I had never played that big in all my life. So I was very, very stressed. Stress was normal to me. In fact, I actually told myself I was good at managing stress. And this individual said, you really, you think you're good at managing stress? I said, yeah, 
I handle stress really well. I've redesigned schools. I've created downtown Denver's first elementary school. I've advised the White House and Gates Foundation and Senate. I've done all kinds of really courageous things. I know courage is a muscle. I work on flexing that muscle. It's hard, but I make myself do it. I chase the challenge. I've conditioned myself to be a high performer. I study leadership. I study psychology. I study systems thinking. I study neuroscience. I make sure that I'm on my A game. One of the biggest differences between me and the norm is the last time they studied was probably high school or college, right? I'm scholarly, I'm studying all the time. It's how I change the trajectory of my disease with cancer. I would be here with you bald, fuzzy headed in the aftermath of a lot of chemotherapy given the type of cancer I had. But I took the risk, I said, I listened, I trusted God, I surrendered to the journey. I was having nightmares about coyotes and werewolves ripping flesh off of my body when we thought I was gonna do a full mastectomy. And my breast surgeon, she was phenomenal. She said, that might be a sign that you would be a good candidate for breast conservation. Let's talk. And then we waited when my genetic test came back negative. That was a step in the right direction for breast conservation. We decided to do a lumpectomy. I was a little bit scared because what would happen if we did a lumpectomy, they take the margins and they take lymph nodes. And if those, if the cancer had spread, which given that it was the most aggressive type and high growth, there was a high likelihood that it would have spread, that then we'd have to go in and do the mastectomy. So it was very, very risky, but everything in me said that was what was right. That was one of the first times I actually learned to listen to myself. And I took that chance. And then what I did, what did I do? I fell right back into that fallback behavior of surrendering my power to others. Oh, I don't know. Was that the right thing to do? What if cancer, what if they didn't get all the cells? What if there's like little stragglers and those little stragglers like become cancer again? Oh my God. And then it takes about, it took about six years for that tumor to grow. Okay. Well, then that means that I won't know if anything's bad for another six years. Oh my gosh. Can I tell you, I'm like the queen of worry. And it comes generationally. My grandma's good at it. My mom's good at it. I'm very skilled at it. And I've decided, you know what? There was actually a study out of UC Berkeley that says only 8% of what we worry about comes true. And of that, we have control of less than half. Well, as a mathematician, I thought, okay, that means out of every 100 things, four I have control over. Well, I was really only worried about like three to five things. So mathematically, none of those are going to come true. So... I wanted to embrace a little Oliver and company. Why should I worry? Why should I care? So I decided I was gonna to have to rewire my brain. I started rewiring, I started working on that. I put every biobehavioral choice, I have an entire spreadsheet that I'm gonna share with you in the Awakening Program. Because what I learned is these biobehavioral choices are what allowed me to hear the voice of God. They're what allow me to have vivid dreams that are very visual. And what's amazing, I've never really experienced that before, is now I know I'm on course. I know with conviction that I'm doing the right thing. And guess what? That struggle bus, I don't even go to the bus stop anymore. I'm like, oh yeah, there it goes, rolling by. Occasionally I glance in that direction. I glanced in that direction last week because an individual came into my life with some negative energy. And that individual told me some things that rocked my world. And I was like, oh, but I'm working so hard. I'm trying so hard. I feel like I'm divinely led. I, th I don't know that I'm doing the right thing all the time, but I'm definitely on course. I'm on my journey. I'm doing it. I'm stepping courageously into every single day with high performance productivity, which when I didn't believe in myself, I was on that peak and plummet, peak and plummet roller coaster again. So now I'm back into high performance mode with my business, which felt really good because when you're in your career, someone else is calling the shots and it's easier to be a high performer. See, it was easy for me to not have the peaks and valleys. When I shifted into entrepreneurship and I could choose any direction, it was kind of like when we could live anywhere we wanted. God edited the brick and mortar school out of our lives when my daughter was being called an effing N word and told to kill herself at school. So I removed her from that. Then I lost my job. Then I got cancer. It was like, all of a sudden, I could live anywhere in the world doing what I wanted to do. And I was living the dream that I had carried seven years prior. Yet I was still in the state of anxiety, stress, and struggle. And I reminded myself, you are living the dream you always wanted. You wanted to be able to teach, to create community, to coach from your laptop anywhere in the world, and eventually bring people together on beaches. Like, that's it. 
that's what you wanted to do. Now you're living it. Step into that with courage. But I wasn't. I was stepping into that with a lot of fear. And you want to know the four symptoms of fear? I became the queen of all of them. Overanalysis. No, overthinking. Analysis paralysis. FOMO, which for high performers stands for fear of missed opportunity. We don't fear missing out because we know we're not missing out. What we fear is missing opportunities and comparisonitis. And that's what I was spending my days doing. Now that I'm divinely aligned, oh my gosh, I get to experience miracles every single day. And it is so amazing. And sometimes those miracles are the smallest things like a loving neighbor has the time to stop by and pick up the dog treats that my daughter made for his foster pup. And that some, the day before the miracle was my daughter just out of the blue went and made those out of the kindness of her heart. I didn't even have to ask. She also made dinner that night because I was in the middle of a 16 hour workday. I'm training with the world's leading high performance coach this week. It's a very high energy, high intensity week. And she stepped up to the plate without even being asked because she observed, because I've taught her. I want you to be able to see when something needs done and then you step in and do it. That's what the best employees do. That's what the best leaders do. That's what the best innovators do. The best CEOs do. You're all, the best are always looking for an opportunity and they don't go waiting for a permission slip or waiting to be told. They go, they see an opportunity and they go get it done, honey. I want you to do the same thing for, for the love of God, right? And so my daughter's heard that lecture more times than once. And last night, or no, the night before last, it magically happened. It was so beautiful, right? There's all these things. Sometimes it's a meeting with someone who that meeting goes, oh my gosh, how did this happen? It was divine that we got to connect. Scripture tells us God, God chooses. The book of Acts tells us that God chooses the times and places in which they'll be. So if you come across this, the reason that I'm spending so much time telling you my story and it's because I feel called to. And I know that that's because I'm using this as an avenue to meet my soul family, to gather my soul family and to awaken out of the third dimension and ascend into 4D and 5D living because that's what's happening right now. The earth is being divided into two highways. One is gonna be the highway that's governed by fear you'll feel it. It'll make you feel anxious. If you don't want to step onto that highway, you can choose another path. That, that path is your awakening journey. It's an ascension into a higher vibrational state. The, there are three words that have the highest vibration in which all dreams manifest from. We're going to talk about these in the program, but I really want to talk about the, I want you to think about vibration as a scale. And when you're around people who are talking about politics, who are talking about the economy, who are talking about drama and dating and da 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 those are low vibrational things. I even noticed it, this person that I used to really adore was telling me about a birthday party. And in the retelling, everything that that person said had no meaning. It was very superficial. And I observed that and I thought, wow, that's because my vibration has become so high my vibrations become so high that literally animals are drawn to me. We have this lovely family who's fostering kittens and we go visit them. And I'm not really a cat person. And literally these kittens just onto me. And the one cat that they, that they actually own is a very um, standoffish cat. The kind of cat that is the reason I don't like cats, to be honest. It's very like, screw you. I don't want to know you. Leave me alone. And now I'm like the loving, open-armed kind of person. That's why I like dogs, because they're like, hi, be my friend, let's hang out. And I'm like, yeah, that's like me. So interestingly, their mean, grumpy cat loves me. And they're like, whoa, I've never seen him be like that. And I kind of giggled inside because I went, it's because of my vibration. But obviously, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to be like, oh, it's because I'm working on my vibrational energy. You want to know why I'm working on my vibrational energy? Not only because I want to manifest dreams. My daughter wants to jump in the Olympics. That's going to cost some cash. So I've quadrupled my income. It took me about seven years to do that. And now I want to quadruple it again, but I want to do that in three. That's what I've got budgeted for. So 
that's a little behind the scenes about me. Um, and if you want to journey with me on that and we high five each other along the way, I'd love to meet you in awakening. That's going to be where, where I meet my soul family. I'm so excited that God told me that and brought me this opportunity to work with you and to be divinely guided every night. Whenever I pray, I imagine myself entering God's boardroom. God's the ultimate leader. And I'm there with his angels, his guardians, his protectors, star seeds, higher counsel, all of these galactic beings. And I'm like, how'd today go? Okay, what do I need to do tomorrow? Guide me through this step by step because this is big. I mean, I was scared when I reported to, you know, the deputy director of academic affairs. I was scared when I reported to chief human resources officer. I was scared when I reported to lieutenant governor and, and these people that I perceived that I held on pedestals. But you want to know what's real scary? Reporting to God Almighty. Woo! But what's beautiful is that I should say, and what's beautiful because we're working on words. And what's beautiful is that God is a loving God. God's guiding us and welcoming us home to the place where we really belong, right? Where we feel peace, we feel love, we feel joy. One of the things I love about living here in the horse capital of the world in a town that's motto is God is with us is literally one of my favorite people that I've met he messages me every day and says, how did you sleep? I wake up to that. It's like amazing. And he'll ask, how was your day? What are you doing today? And actually cares. Like, isn't, I'm so busy, I don't have time for you, right? My ex was often like, acted like it was some grand gift that he'd spend an hour on the phone with me. And I'm like, um, just so you know, relationships are about relating. So I'm so sorry I bothered you, right? And then it was like, oh, no, it's not a bother. I enjoy talking to you. I'm like, well, you didn't act like it. So it's really interesting to kind of look at our behaviors from that position of truth, right? And I'm really excited that when we practice, again, release. I just had to do it because I got that negative energy of an X. Release and then trust. Trust in your vision. Scripture teaches us, God gives us the desires of our heart. Some interprets that to mean that God gives them to us, like Gigi's desire to jump in the Olympics. I didn't give her that one. I knew nothing about horses. I always, people see how good she is at riding and they say, did you grow up riding? Where'd you grow up riding? I'm like, I grew up riding waves. I didn't grow up riding wild beasts, no way. No way, Jose, I ain't getting on that thing. I'm pretty courageous, but I'm not as courageous as her. I ain't getting on a wild animal, jumping over fences, no way. So. Anyhow, God granted her the desires of that, of her heart. And I tell her every day, pursue that wholeheartedly. That's God. I didn't give you that. You didn't just make that up. Like that's God working in you and through you. Some interpret it to mean God will just gift those desires to you. I keep praying for that. I'm like, God, I want the man of my dreams. I want to snuggle him at night. I want to lift him up. I want him to ask about my day. I want him to genuinely care. I want to be on a spiritual journey with him continually growing, lifting each other up, having romantic, passionate sex that is filled with cosmic orgasms that align our consciousness. I've learned that's a thing. That's a part of the program that's for select participants only. I've been told, I'm a little embarrassed to even talk about that, but there are two parts of the program that I've been told are not for everyone. And I've been given a list of readiness indicators, which is really funny because that's what I used to do as a teacher way back in the day is you would look at when I worked with gifted and talented kids, they were often all over the place in terms of grade levels. So you didn't have a bucket of content that you were teaching them. You had to look at curriculum compacting, taking a lot of information into a little space and determining readiness for their learning. That's what is in the awakening program. I've literally taken 20 years of research on leadership and high performance and put it into like technically an hour and 19 minute sessions. So what would that be for? About five and a half hours. I'm really good at math, but doing clock time is obviously not my strength. Thank you for your patience while I calculated that. So this whole storytelling episode is really all about inspiring you. What I've been told is I have to be relating, sharing my story been guided to do that. It's really uncomfortable for me and I hope you can appreciate that. I'd rather tell you the polished version that makes me look really good. But the reality is 
Often while I was growing my career, my life was a hot mess under the surface. I was loading my body with toxins at night, like eating foods that have no nutrient density at all. I didn't even know really about nutrient density until 2013, but when my student contacted me and asked me to do this cleanse with her, I learned a lot about the power of food. Yet what would I do whenever I was stressed and anxious? I would go and eat foods that were horrible for me. Well, what does that do? It puts a heavy digestive load on your body. Like here's what I did yesterday. So yesterday was an 11 hour day on the heels of a 16 hour day. I was very, very tired. My neighbor had also told me, hey, the barbecue place is celebrating its anniversary and the, um, oh gosh, I don't even remember the name of it, but there was this particular type of sandwich that was on sale for $6 and a rib plate that was on sale for 10. And I thought, wow, that sounds fabulous. So we went, we've never had Southern barbecue. I thought I just led sessions on control. One of the three things we can control that creates greater happiness and fulfillment and joy in our lives is control for new experiences. So Monday night I'd taken Gigi to Zumba, that was fun. And I thought, let's try Southern barbecue. Well, you wanna know what I did? I ate a pickup truck. Oh my gosh, I got home. It tasted amazing. I fully enjoyed the entire meal. Don't get me wrong. There was about 40 minutes of joy and then about four hours of feeling like I'd been hit by a truck sitting in a food coma. And then you wanna know what happened? I tossed and turned all night long. And I was like, dang, that sucked. You know why that sucked so bad? Because then I couldn't get out of bed this morning. Anyone know what really sucks? Is I know better. I teach people what you eat after 2 p.m. determines the success of your next day. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know what I did? Why I was tossing and turning all night is because my body was busy digesting toxins. When we have a high digestive load after 2 or 3 p.m., it screws up our sleep. Whereas I now have all these biobehavioral practices where I often wake two to three hours before my alarm. I'm often done with work by 11 a.m. And I'm like, yes, I get a whole life to live. I get to discover who I am, do things I enjoy doing. As a single mom, can I tell you, I have never been able to do that before in my life. I was on everybody else's agenda all the time. And so if you were to ask me, who am I or what do I want to do with my time? I wouldn't have an answer for you. Now I got a whole lot. I'm like, oh, I want to go play with the kittens. I want to stop by and see Katie and Tommy and hear about how they're doing and what, if they've been out on their boat, if they've been deep sea fishing or fly fishing, what they're up to. I want to go hear about this person's competition. Like I actually have the opportunity to know people deeply. And you want to know what? It's the most beautiful thing to be connected to another human being where you literally have peace and space to see them, to see the beauty in them, to see the love, the compassion, the thoughtfulness. What's awesome about that is that the people and the experiences we have, it's like a mirror. Because as I started seeing love and beauty in people, I was able to start loving myself more. And the hardest part of myself to love this is where we're gonna get real personal. I'm like, really God, okay, was my breasts. Because in the aftermath of cancer, losing 43 pounds with my biobehavioral practices, one of my breasts, well, both of them lost shape, but then the one that had surgery because of radiation got really awesome. Like I was like, dang, could you radiate the other side too? Cause one became really like full and voluptuous and the other felt like a little bit like a half deflated balloon. And so I was feeling uneven. I was feeling unattractive. And I was also, it's so hard to talk about this subject because everyone's on their own journey. And what I know to be true is I don't want to be fake. I do like the look of a natural fake breast. It's beautiful. I, didn't, I have two friends that I didn't even know their breasts were fake until having this conversation. And they, you know, one of them told me, just go buy a pair. I was like, I just, it's not that I don't want to just go buy a pair. A, I am kind of a pansy when it comes to pain. I don't really want to be under the knife. Um, and I'm a smart and savvy spender. So I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a pair of breasts that aren't mine. And I don't want 
toxic plastic in my body either as a cancer survivor. So there's, for me, many reasons that I don't want that. The biggest of which is I don't want to tell my subconscious that I have to be fake to be beautiful. I don't want to tell my subconscious that I'm playing the game of society tells me who and what is beautiful. I want to be naturally beautiful. I want to see, I saw this beautiful ad in an Oprah magazine when I was at the OBGYN when I was pregnant. It was a woman with salt and pepper speckled hair, about shoulder length, beautiful natural wavy curls, a little unkept, beautiful tan brown skin, like light chocolate color, and the most radiant smile, bright white teeth, and next to her eyes and her lips were so many wrinkles and ev next to every wrinkle was a memory. And I saw that ad and I said, that's gonna be me. I'm not pumping my face full of poison for the sake of looking good. And I've now learned that when people are too fake, they're not trusted. And as I learned that, I started to go, yeah, you know what? When I see that person, I can't tell their expression and it does make me a little more skeptical and cautious about what they're saying. They have to work harder and be smarter because they look so fake externally that my subconscious doesn't have trust. Trust is the number one behavior that creates speed and success. I've trained on the 13 trust behaviors to leaders across the globe. I know what creates trust. Fake does not create trust. And so I knew for myself, and again, everybody's on their own journey. For me personally, I would not feel good about myself if I was telling myself that I have to be fake to be beautiful. I just didn't want it. And so I took my dear friend's luxury lotion that she makes in this high vibration environment and I started rubbing it all over my body. And every time I would tell myself I was beautiful and the love that I experienced from others became the love that I shared with myself. And what was even more amazing after that is that the love I shared with myself became the love that projected out. We're mirrors. It's almost like I live in a different dimension right now because my days are characterized by loving interactions with people. And I'm just in this beautiful state of flow and freedom and peace and trust that everything's happening for me. And because of my vibration, because of my intention, because of my manifesting, because of all my biobehavioral choices, and it's happening for me and because of me, for me and because of me at all times. And that state of flow, my friends, it's like being liquid. You're like this beautiful river just navigating peacefully through life. Are there boulders? Yeah, but you work around them. You don't give them your attention. They don't hold the same power. And you certainly don't stop in like the little mucky murky off offshoot where everybody else is hanging out talking about the economy, talking about the election, talking about, talking about, talking about. You're not, you're actually quiet. Which as someone who loves to talk, for me to be in that state of stillness and silence, that's pure growth, my friends. That's proof anything's possible for you too. I mean, for me, I look at the transformation and my coach asks me all the time, what's the A to B for people? And I'm like, well, it's living in that anxious state of control, worry, fear, surrendering your power, trying to respond instead of react all the time. Respond, how do I respond, how do I respond? Okay, I'm not gonna react to that, how do I respond? It's, that's control. I was holding life at arm's length, trying to control it all. And now I'm knee deep in it, in the messiness and dirt of a horse show, in in the little cuteness of kittens purring, in being fully present on a date and looking this man across the table in the eyes, a man who was trying to get me into a hotel room. And I decided I'm never gonna see this person again. But in that moment, to choose to not further pain, but be love, because I know that if I can look him in the eye, see him, help him love himself, he won't be behaving that way with the next woman. Maybe the next one, yes, but maybe down the road, right? Like I can be an instrumental part of showing him what love really is. 
just like all of the people in my life right now show me what love and humanity really is. That's 5D, my friends. 5D is that we are one humankind. And that fifth dimension, when we act from that space, everything changes. That's the space I want you to awaken to. Yes, you'll experience greater career success, and I know that's what you want, because that's what I wanted. It's the side effects that are amazing. So yes, you'll step courageously into the launch of your business or into the next promotion. Those will th be things that happen for you. Yet you know in your heart and soul that you're more than your career. You're also likely navigating what I was doing is suffering in silence. It's what I teach my daughter that people are like icebergs. And I know this because this was what was true for me. And so when kids would be mean, I would tell her, people are like icebergs. You know, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg when you see that person beneath the surface. They've probably got a lot going on. So be kind, be as kind as you possibly can because you only get a glimpse at what's really happening in that person's life. And if that's kids being mean, I can tell you they got a lot under the surface. They're dealing with a lot. If they're glowing and happy and nice, they may have learned to adapt. <laughs> they still got a lot going on. You know why? All humans have a lot going on, my friends. Oh, geez, I'm late to my training with Brendan. I've just gone on and on today. It's been an honor to be with you. I am speaking to my podcast listeners. I'm speaking to my YouTube community. I'm speaking to my high performance leadership group. If you're in one of those groups, thank you for joining this tribe. It's a high vibe tribe. I love it. We are the rising tide, raising all ships. We are building brilliance in ourselves, in our families, in our communities, in our workplaces and in the world. And that is how we transform the world. If you know someone who's been through some of the things that I've been through, please share this with them. Please give them hope. Please let them know they don't have to suffer in silence alone and be so anxious and stressed and worried. Release them of that. The number one way, it's so simple. It's through connection. Connection with ourselves, connection with each other, and connection with source energy. Power so much greater than us that is always guiding us. I now know that I'm actually a star seed, a hybrid star seed from two different galaxies. And I have two higher councils who are also working with God as my guide and with my guardians and protectors and my angels. That's a new version of God that I never knew before. And I can't wait to see what your new version of God is. So if you love God and you want to share the love of God with someone else who may be like me, you want to know what I told Gigi when she said, can we go to church? I told her, absolutely not. And she said, why not? I was so strong, adamant. And I said, sweetheart, mommy likes places that unite people, that bring us together. And church creates division. Church also tells people who belongs and who doesn't belong. And I know that we all belong, that we are all God's children and God is love. Not God loves some people who have a certain sexual orientation or God loves some people who did X, Y, Z. God doesn't love the rest. That's not true. If we are God's children, I can tell you as a mom, there is nothing that child can do that would make me love her any less. And so there were some friction agitations that I had with God. Everybody has them. Everybody has their own. You can argue with mine, and if you want to, bye. You're not in this group. It's not the place for arguing. That is low vibration, my friends. And we are up here. We are just saying there are agitations, there are confusions, because God is so big that we can't comprehend God with our cognitive mind. So anybody who tells you they know all about God, hmm, real skeptical, right? You can go hang out with fake face over there because uh, none of y'all seem to have really any truth to you. This is a space of truth. This is a space of belonging. This is a space of being real. And so once I told her that, I also told her that church has been um, used to control people and manipulate their behavior and slow the advancement of society through withholding information. To which she looked at me immediately and said, can we go? I thought to myself, are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind, Clarice? My neighbor, one of my favorite neighbors used to always say that. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, like here I've gone off the deep end about why church is so bad. And now literally God and I are like this. I'm like, homie. 
bring it, bring it, homie. I need you today. Where are you, my bestie? And so it's possible for you too. And if you know someone who, I, know, I meet a lot of people who know God, but don't experience God. And so if you know someone who you think would love to know God or would benefit, please share this with them. I've been told that's, that's part of my calling is to help people who have some misunderstandings and agitations about God and who also feel really stuck and stagnant in their relationship with God. Those are the two that God said I'll be working with. And I was like, okay, I'll wait for them. So if someone comes to mind, please share. Go to drj.com forward slash divine to get yourself signed up for the awakening program. I, um, right now, God has only guided me to do this once. So if, if you're thinking I'll do it later, later may never come. So just be a yes person. Channel the Jupiter and Uranus. God created the galaxies to guide us. Jupiter and Uranus are telling us this is a time of expansion, success, fortune, change, and innovation. So if you want to achieve a different outcome, you need to start putting in different inputs. So that's why we're going to work on editing your environment. We're going to work on the biobehavioral plan that's personalized to you so that you can control those inputs to determine the directionality of your outputs. And sometimes God likes to deliver something greater. Like I was going to stay in the comfort of Colorado and God opened every door for us to come to the horse capital of the world. And it has been nothing but up until the right, the hockey stick effect happening and easy. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Right? So if you want to welcome those kinds of blessings into your life, go to drj.com forward slash divine, drjea.com forward slash divine, share the love, be the rising tide that lifts all ships. Share this with someone who comes to mind right now. That's how God works, by the way. When someone comes to mind, that's not serendipity. It's not weird. It's not a coincidence. That's God's grand orchestration, energy and vibration, moving and flowing. Keep the flow going. Go with the flow. Let's be liquid, friends. Let's be liquid. Sending you loads of love and light, high vibrational energy. Mwah.